Okay, today's project that I'm going to show a tutorial for, I was asked to show a tutorial on what exactly is a lavender wand and how do you make these things. And this is a lavender wand, and some people call them lavender bottles. And they're made from fresh lavender, and you use them as a sachet in your closet or your, your dresser drawers or anywhere you want to smell like lavender. So what you need to do this project with you're going to need a pair of scissors, just craft scissors, nothing special. You're going to need some ribbon, and it needs to be a quarter inch wide, and it can't be the ribbon with wire in it. It has to be just plain satin or grow grain ribbon. It can, it's your choice. You want it to be the same on both sides, though, so you don't want velvet ribbon. And you can pick any color you want. And then you're going to need some fresh lavender. And it has to be fresh because we're going to be working with the stems and if it, it's dry the stems will all just crack. So when you go to cut your lavender, if you're cutting it yourself the way lavender grows it's a, a thick bushy plant that shoots up spikes of where the flowers are. And you want to cut as long of a, la of a spike of the lavender stem as you can because the stem part is going to be the entire length of your lavender wand. So <clears throat> you need to go ahead and get yourself, say I'm going to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stems, approximately the same length. They don't have to be perfect. You can trim this up as you go, but you want to start off approximately the same length. So one of the things you do to prepare your lavender stems. You see you've got these lower buds. You're going to go ahead and just pull them off. And you want to work over a tablecloth or a piece of newspaper. That way you can save all of these little lavender buds that fall off or that are stripped off. And you can lay them out and dry them somewhere where they're not going to get disturbed and then you can use them to make other sachets and things with. And if it's organic lavender you can make tea. So, you want to go ahead and make sure you strip off all the little buds and leaves off of your stem. So you want that nice and straight. And one thing to keep in mind, you've got to like the smell of lavender. By the time you're done with this project, your hands are going to smell very strongly of lavender. So once you've stripped everything off below the flower, the flower head, you want to start bundling your stems up. You're just going to take them in a tight little bundle <coughs> and you're going to put them all together just in a little flower bundle like you're making a little bouquet. Once you're done with that, you're going to take your ribbon and you're going to need about a yard to a yard and a half of ribbon and have a little piece cut. You're going to tie off your stems and leave about an inch tail and you want to go ahead and tie this in a secure double knot because that's going to hold the whole thing together and you don't want to tie it so tight that it cuts into the stems and damages in them that you don't want to cut it to make it too loose that it just doesn't hold everything together. Once you've got it tied you're going to slide it down towards the flowers. You're going to take the little tail of ribbon and you are going to tuck it up inside the flowers. And now comes the very tricky part and this is where I usually mess up. Actually, before we do that, we're going to trim off this end because you see how these are not quite even. And you're going to go ahead and just trim your stems. And then on the top end, where you've got the flower buds, you see there's a few that are a little bit longer than others. Just give that a trim too so it's nice and even to work with. What we're going to do, we're going to very carefully fold the stems back over the flowers. And to do that, to keep it from cracking, 
you're going to have to take your thumbnail and you're going to have to very gently kind of press very gently crush the base of the flower stem a few times see how I've done that and it makes it a little more flexible and you're going to do that and fold it over and this is where it gets slightly tedious and you want to lay them down in, row, in a row going around the flower spikes so you're going to find the next one in the row and you're going to gently crush the stem with your thumbnail for about a fourth of an inch to a half of an inch and then lay it over and it doesn't matter if these are all perfect because we're going to even that up at the end right now you're just working on getting the stems bent over back on themselves without breaking them so you want to gently pinch that kind of flatten it and then pull it back on itself. I've got the next one in the row. And if you see one that you forgot, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and prepare the stem and lay it where it goes. This is just getting it ready for the next step. Okay, I've got two more. And there's one last one. And you just want to make sure that you now have and this little tail comes untucked. Don't worry about that. Just tuck it in as best you can. You want to have and e your stems spaced evenly around encasing the flower spikes so you can go in with your fingernails and kind of pull them even and now what we're going to do how we make this part of the wand you weave the ribbon and it's just over and under and so the first row is usually pretty tricky and <laughs> You need to um, just pay attention to where your stems are laying so that you don't accidentally do over, over, or under, under. And once you get the first go around done, it's going to be a little easier. And you want to keep it a little firm against the flower head, but you don't need to just compact it and squeeze it all together. So when you get back around to your first one, if you went you went over, you should be going under. Then you know you didn't miss one. <laughs> and your second row, you're doing opposite. So you can look above it on the stem and if it was over on the first round, it's going to be under on the second round. And you just want to keep your little lavender flowers tucked in and as you're weaving you want to take your fingernail and kind of push the ribbon back towards the end of the flower heads you don't want it completely solid weave because the little spaces in between your rows of ribbon are how you're going to smell your lavender so if the ribbon gets twisted, just kind of you know straighten it out with your fingers and see here's the the tail to tuck in and I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. And this one is an under. And this one is an over. And under and over and so on and so forth 
you're going to keep working over and under and if you kind of lose one of your stems just take a minute and gently pull it back into position and over and under over and sometimes you have to kind of reach in and find that next stem but once you get a few rows in it's gonna get a lot easier because you'll be able to see exactly where things are going And as you go, you want to gently slide your slide your ribbon towards the end. And you see some little lavender buds poking out. You can pick them off. You can leave them. I, I like to leave most of them. It doesn't matter to me. They're, they're probably not going to fall off. This is, if you want to know how I learned how to do this, I'd gone to a May Day festival, and it was a fairy festival, and there was a lady who was doing a workshop making lavender wands. I would say, as far as the age group on who can do this, if a child is old enough to be able to do you know, detailed work with their hands, that's fine. If not, you can help them. But the only, you know, you have to worry about cracking the stems and and um, twisting the ribbon. So I'd say an older child could do this without any problem. Probably not a little bitty kid, though. But when I took the, the class at the Fairy Festival, a lot of, a lot of people were working on them with their, their daughters. As far as where to get to the lavender, if you live near a lavender farm or an herb farm, they may have picking, or you can, like I had, I did at the Chapel Hill Lavender Farm, or you can go maybe get fresh bundles of lavender from them. If you grow lavender, you're going to need to grow a fair amount to get enough to make more than one of these. Um, the a florist may be able to get you lavender, some specialty florists, so this is something you're going to need to plan out a little bit ahead of time for this project. And you want your lavender to be nice and, and fresh, so if you get, you do have to order from a florist or something, you want to make sure to keep it in water before you're ready to work on it. Because once the stems, the stems can be a little wilted and it's not going to hurt anything, but if they start to dry out, they're going to get brittle. So as you see, this is the real tedious part, going over and under, just basket weaving all the way around. And you do this until you get to the end of the flower spike. So I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little now that I have a, have a good start. And this is something I thought to do, go ahead and do the tutorial because Earth Day is Earth Day is about here and May Day is coming up. And this is something nice to make if you're going to make May Day flower wreaths. Or do something with flowers for May Day or just for springtime for Mother's Day if you want to make something for Mother's Day present. This is something you can you can do. It's a perfect time of year. This variety of lavender is just now coming into bloom where I live. And depending on where you live and where lavender blooms, this may be a late summer or even an early fall project for you. And if your ribbon twists, just there you go. Just use your fingers to and twist it and as you can tell it goes a little bit 
a little bit faster the fast the farther you get. You could use narrower ribbon. You could use eighth of an inch ribbon, but you can see how long it's taking with fourth of an inch ribbon. If you just want to enjoy sitting and, and weaving, you can use a tighter weave and use narrower ribbon. It's up to you. I'm getting to the end, so I've only got a few more go-rounds. And you'll notice as you start to get to the end, it's going to start getting narrower. As far as the tension on this, you don't want to squeeze in too tight to compress it, but you do need to have enough tension on the ribbon that it's going to all hold together because these are going to dry out and they're going to shrink slightly when they dry. So, and you just keep on over and under. And like I said, sometimes you lose your stem in there and you gotta kind of take your fingernails and pick it back to the front. your ribbon up. I'm almost done. So I'll show you how to finish this off for now. Got about one more go around. And if your ribbon gets creased like this, all you have to do is Kind of pick it and twist it and get it back. Okay, so I'm now to the end of the flower part. I'm going to wrap my ribbon. I'm going to pull it slightly tight, wrap it around once, and then to secure it, I'm going to wrap and pull through. Okay, and for now, this is all you want to do, and cinch it tight, like that. Because what we need to do is let this dry. And you can hang this just somewhere where it's going to get good airflow. You want to leave your long tail, because that's what we're going to use to finish the stem part. I just did this to show you how it's going to look. So you're going to hang it like this for at least a few days until it starts to dry and the, the stems are going to shrink a little. And you're going to tighten it up a little more and then take your ribbon and hold some tension on it because you're going to wrap this tight around the stems and you're just going to spiral your ribbon up the stems and then when you get about a half an inch from the end you're going to tie that off and make a hanging loop and then you can decorate it however you want. You can glue dried flowers to it. You can dry, um, glue silk flowers to it. You can put extra ribbon on it. You can put buttons, pearls, whatever you want to do. You can decorate it as simple or as complicated as you want. Now, before I got ahead of myself, before you um, hang it up to dry, you see how the end is kind of kind of uneven at the top. You want to take it and gently tap it on a table or your, whatever your work surface is and see how that kind of flattens the end. You want to do that now while it's still green because if you try to do it after it dries it's just going to crack. So that is what you're going for at the end and that's what your finished product is going to look like before you dry it. And then once you dry it and wrap your ribbon around, that's what you're going to end up with.